one of the best voices in radio, by the way. I just have to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that. It, I, I owe it all to Jiggy Jaguar. He, he's taught <laughs> He's, he's taught my voice. I know. Uh, listen, what a what a trip for you having to deal with all that. So when you're going through that thing, because my my wife had squeamish cell on her face and she was scared to death, and uh, you know because she had to have this all done. I mean, where were you at with that whole thing? Oh, I mean, fear is the cornerstone of a disease like that, uh, without a doubt. And, you know, I mean, you literally face death. You look at it right in the face, and it affects you for the rest of your life. And you're always afraid that it's right around the corner again. Um, and, uh, you know, so it takes some adjustment to get used to that idea. Um, and uh, I don't know if you ever completely get used to it, but... Um, you know, as time goes on, you know, you start feeling more and more confident. And at three years out, I'm way more confident than I was sure. three months out. <laughs> right. And so this head and neck cancer uh, awareness week uh, that just happened, right? Just a couple about, well, last week, right? Was it last week? Was it week before? Yeah. Right? It was ended it? on the 14th, technically. And, and so... Talk to us a little bit about, you know, head and neck cancer awareness week. I mean, how, what was your involvement? How much was it? And what would, what was your, what was your impression of what they're doing and where they're heading and where they're going? Well, this is the thing, Jay, that this, believe it or not, this is almost a preventable cancer, quite frankly. And, uh, it, it, from two fronts. Now there are the outliers. Okay. But putting that aside for a second, people that don't smoke, and use tobacco. That's a huge step, okay, for uh, any kind of head or neck or mouth oral cancer of any kind, okay? That is on the decline because a lot less people are doing those things. What is on the incline is HPV-related cancer. That's human papillomavirus. That is the same virus that causes warts, um, and the, the, it's a highly, highly contagious thing. Uh, women can get tested for it uh, with a pap smear, but men, unfortunately, do not have that option yet. And so that can be that virus can cause uh, cancer and, and I mean, penile cancer and, uh, you know, uh, cervical and women and all sorts of things. So what's on the rise is the head and neck cancer. And if you get the immunization uh, at a younger age or even even now, even when people, I think you can get up to 35 now or something insurance pays for it, uh, it can greatly, greatly reduce the chances of you ever getting an HPV-related cancer. So with the next generation or so, we're going to knock this down in a huge way. But I, so part of the reason I'm doing this is to let people know you don't have to go through what I went through. Right. I mean, you know, I'm all on the immunotherapy train if you do get it. Uh, or any kind of cancer. I think um, it, it's used for so many different cancers these days, immunotherapy, that is. But if you can just avoid it in the first place, the HPV vaccine, I'm going to give it to my kids the minute they turn 12 or 11, and uh, I recommend other people do it. I know there's a lot of pushback with vaccines, but honestly, <laughs> there isn't a side effect that is worse than cancer. <laughs> no, I, I, no, I totally agree with you, and I'm, I am all on board with you on this. And I was about to say, in light of recent um, battles that we've had, right, with vaccines and things like that, I'm like going, I'm, I'm, I'm in total agreement with you. Listen, if opening up your mouth and saying, ah, and getting a vaccine to pre is preventable, why would you not, why would we not want to do this, Ricky? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know, it's like, okay, this, this group of people stand on that side of the room and you have less of a chance of getting this than if you stand on that side of the room. I'm going to take the first option. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's, it's just kind of simple math. So, you know, I hope people see it that way. It doesn't, you know, they've done a lot of studies. It doesn't make your kids want to go out and have sex any more or less. It doesn't have any impact on that. I know that's a big topic with a lot of people this isn't birth control right. uh, that's a whole nother subject uh right. you know because they're even saying that deep kissing you can spread hpv uh there's that possibility now that they're looking into and there is some uh uh clinical trials uh with men to uh to find it um uh so you know there, there's all sorts of um new stuff on the horizon but right now our best defense is that vaccination so d during 
during uh, Head and Neck um, week that we had here a week ago, how many people do you think, you know, probably, or do you have any numbers on how many people actually did the free scanning during that? I week? don't. I, I'm waiting for those numbers. Uh, okay. I'd love to share them with you, but uh, I, unfortunately, I don't have them uh, yet. Yeah, I, I was just curious because this is the 21st. This was the 21st year of it. A lot of people don't realize this was the 21st year of um, Head and Neck Cancer Awareness Week. And, uh, I mean, it's just a, it's a really cool – by the way, uh, it's headandneck.org for people if you're wanting to learn more information about what Ricky Rocket is talking about here on the Jiggy Jaguar experience. It's, uh, it's just go to headandneck.org, and you can learn so much more about Head and Neck Cancer, uh, the Head and Neck Cancer Alliance and Head and Neck Cancer Awareness Week, uh, which Ricky – And my video's up there, Jay. Yeah, there, no, it is. I'm looking right at it. I think you got Jude up there with you, as a matter of fact, don't you? Yeah. Is that, yeah, you know, I got my little boy on there with me. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah See, and I, you know what? It's a scary sight to look at if you, you know, if you if you disassemble and sort of look at the components. But the fact of the matter is that there's a lot of really good outcomes from this. Most of them are actually if you if you just jump on it and get it done and get it fixed. So I don't want people to be afraid to find out because that's the opposite way to handle this um you know what i mean it really is not a good way if you feel anything wrong like you're having trouble swallowing you can't get food down you're sore you have a lymph node sticking out you don't know why get into an ent preferably you can start with your regular doctor but you're going to wind up in an ent where they just put this little tube through your down your nose it doesn't hurt it takes god i mean i, I get it every uh six months and, and it's not a big deal at all. Trust me when I tell you, not a big deal. And then, and then, you know, and, uh, you know, if they see anything funky, they'll, you know, they'll jump on it right away. So, and a lot of times it isn't that a lot of times it's not right. cancer. There are other things that happen down there. So, you know, don't be afraid, get out there and, and, and get it looked at if you have any questions. Well, and Ricky, I'm, I'm sure that over the years, uh, the testing and everything has improved from, from where it was decades ago. Yes. Um, a little bit. I mean, they, they, you know, I think the scopes are better. I mean, I think the equipment's better. I think they have more history now. Um, and definitely with the treatment, the treatment is, way better even than it just was two or three years ago when i started treatment um treatment is better now and there's more options now i mean you know 20 years ago my my fitness trainer had it 21 years ago and back then man he had 42 treatments of of uh of radiation and uh, chemo and surgery i mean they butchered this guy uh, but they did what they knew how to do and how they could handle it People don't have to go through as much these days. They shouldn't have to. And we'll get to a place one day where it will be immunotherapy will be the go-to thing for head and neck cancer because it responds uh, pretty well. They're finding out that they, they've got a lot of uh, combinations that work well for it. It's just a matter of time before you can knock it out with immunotherapy. So, you know, um, I, I can't wait to see that day. So how cool was it, though, that they chose the the second album that you guys ever did as their theme, right? It was open up and say ah. That's the that was your that was the name of your second album that you Poison did. And what a cool way to you know, right? To kind of I just thought that was kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, man. It was. Kind I of thought a, it was. I thought it was very cool. I thought it was great that they you know got creative with it. And, you know what I mean? It made it, it you know try to have as much fun as you can with something that isn't fun at all. <laughs> you know? Right, 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 right. But I, I mean, but isn't that, I mean, l let's be honest with, about whenever we talk about the C word, because we don't, we really don't want to say cancer. No, none of us do. No, but, no, of course not. So, and, 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 you know, let's be honest as guys, because there's three guys on this call right now. All right, let's just be honest. Okay. We don't want to, sometimes we just don't want to know. We we would rather, sure. right? We would almost rather not know than get the checkup, and so I think, you know, to, to me, right? I mean, listen, I'm a guy. I get it. I I sometimes don't want to get because I don't want to know. I don't want to know if there's anything bad, which is actually the worst thing to do, right? 
Well, it is with this kind of stuff. I mean, this isn't like, you know, like you may have done something to your back. Do I get an MRI because I might have a disc or not, a problem or not? You know, that that kind of stuff can wait. This is something that can't. This is a different type of thing. This is something that grows. And, uh, you know, and I'm not telling people to wait with a back right. problem either. But right. what I'm saying is is that this is, you know, you can't ignore that. You know, yeah, it, uh, it, you know, it doesn't go away on its own. Where some other medical things might. You know, you get a sprain, you get, you know, sports injuries. Some of those things get better on their own. This is the type of thing, no. And and there isn't, uh, you know, I haven't seen, and there's no evidence of some kind of a holistic medicine that works for right. real, true cancer. I mean, a lot of people are reaching for that stuff, and I get it. You want hope with that, but honestly... Um, I think people waste a lot of time, and people die trying to try to do it that way, uh, and it worries me to see that. And, and I'm being very bold by saying that people say, "Oh, yeah, well, you can take this or you can take that," and you know, honestly, it's 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 worrisome to me that people try to treat themselves like that. I, I, amen, brother. Amen. I, look, I, 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 the music connection to me is a big deal, you know, because music, you know, you've been you've been a musician your whole life and, and of course I know your love of motorcycles and drones as well. But the thing about this album, open up and say, ah, as it relates back to the, the neck and head cancer is the, the album is actually kind of cool because you know what it does. I listen, I remember these songs. All right. So the, you know, the second track on the album is nothing but a good time. And I don't mean, but it, the truth of the matter is this, these were happy music, you know, even every rose has a storm was on that album, which was when it was, was, was simply your biggest hit as, as poison, I think, think sold more singles than any of, the, of your singles, but it was really cool to me to go, okay, this, this is a huge album that they connected to what you're supporting and what you're doing. And it's a great listening album. And to me, if you just listen to the album and go to the doctor, I, and just put your you know, headphones in, you'll say, ah, I'm just telling you, folks, you'll say, ah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a great idea. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, and I've had other people reach out to me that have had, you know, other cancers and even this one and stuff and say, hey, you know, music helped me get through. And that's the power of music, you know what I mean? And, you know, it gets, it gets you through a run. It gets you, you know, even even some of the Desert Storm guys saying, you know, they were blessed and come hell or high water, you know, on day three of the first Iraq invasion. I mean, you know, it's just, it's that power of music, you know, it's just awesome. Yeah, it is. It It is. And, you know, you, you know, I, you know, I've been so privileged to speak to so many, you know, professional musicians like yourself. And, uh, whenever I do that, I want to just, I always say to want to say to you, as I said to many others, thank you for giving me, you know, sometimes that two, three, four minutes of escape, you know, listening to a track or a song or something that you've done, because I really appreciate that because it, it, there's something powerful about what you have created and are a part of that allows us to escape for a few minutes, our problems. And, uh, well, you know what? I always say that, you know, music is, is a lot like sex. Even when it's bad, it's good. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> Fantastic. I say that about pizza, actually. I say that about pizza, man. I always say, you know, hey, look, even pizza done bad is pretty good, you know? so. <laughs> right, 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 of course. <laughs> right, sex. I mean, right, even done badly, it's still pretty darn good. I don't know, I don't know how to explain Yeah, right. It. I don't know how else to say that to At you, At least man. we like to think so. <laughs> I'll come on thinking that about myself, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Don't push my wife. You'd have to ask my wife more clearly if that's true or not. I can't. I can't actually. <laughs> I'm. I'm kind of bragging on myself here, but she would be the true test of all that. Um, but no, it does. And I think that's what's cool about connecting all this together is connecting the music and connecting uh, you to it, connecting that particular album to what you're doing and what you're supporting. It's. It's. It's an amazing. Cause, but I, 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 listen, I know that we're supposed to talk about this and certain things, but I, I can't help because I've done so much research on you. I, I just can't help. I want to just let you know, I love the Ricky, uh, the rocket vlog on YouTube. Thank it's, you so much. Yeah. I really, Thank really, you. I, I mean, I've really put a lot of energy into that. I'm getting ready to upload tomorrow. Uh, a new one called The Legend of Char, man. That one was kind of fun to make. And so I'm having a lot of fun. I'm getting a lot of traction with a lot of these mystery sort of legends. Oh, the Margaret, the Margaret Rutledge thing is awesome. 
I love the mysterious death of Margaret Rutledge that you did, a Vlog 54. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I you love... know what? It, I might be able to get into that house, so I'm, I'm really gunning for that. Uh, so, But I have some updates to that story, too, uh, because... I found out, I thought that the uh, the murder or the death or whatever occurred upstairs in that bedroom, in one of those three bedrooms. It did not. It occurred in that bottom, uh, on the bottom floor, and it's the mm-hmm. one that I immediately went to and stuck my camera through the window. That's the nice. one. That's nice. the one. That was a bedroom at that time. Nice. So, and the husband was in cahoots with the sheriff in town. Of course he was. So he played he played <laughs> poker with the sheriff. So yeah. does that mean he did it? No. Does that mean he was involved? No. But uh, uh, it's a little funny. The yeah. rifle was stood up in the corner when they found the body. So how did that happen? You yeah. Know? You can see, here's <laughs> here's the thing, Ricky. Looks like a duck. Has feathers like a duck. May or may not be a duck. But boy, there's some shady. I. I love that. So I, I love conspiracy anything, okay, because to me, that's what makes the world go round. But the vlog is great. By the way, we're talking with Ricky Rocket, the drummer for Poison. And uh, you can find him, by the way, at on Twitter at Ricky Rocket. And that's R-I-K-K-I-R-O-C-K-E-T-T. And you can also um, check out his blog, man, the Rocket Vlog. And uh, it's uh, R-O-C-K-E-T-T. And it's the vlog, V-L-O-G. It's the video log. There and then also, you know what? Why not? Why not just like his Facebook page too? It's uh, Ricky Rocket. Just just go Facebook Ricky Rocket, man. He's all over yep. the internet and everything. You can find him so easy. And he's joining us here today on the Jiggy Jaguar Experience. I'm Jay. Is man, I'm like Johnny Cash. I've been everywhere, man. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> as, as I as I as I tell as I often tell people because I do so much social media myself, I always say, listen, if you can't find me, it's because I've now died. So uh, that's no reason. That's, <laughs> that's now awesome. I'm upset about you, Ricky. The only reason you can't find Ricky is because Ricky's gone. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's not. He's that's still not going to happen. Uh-uh, yeah. I gotta stick around. <laughs> you gotta stick around. For, uh, yeah, you, Jude and Lucy need you, man. All right, we all need you, so we need to we need to do that. But anyway, you can find him and 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 listen. Download the Jiggy Jaguar app as well as we sit in here, um, having a really fun time with Ricky Rocket here on the Jiggy Jaguar Experience. So, by the way, I can I can I also jump in and say this? I love the Rocket drum kits. I, Thank you. Thank you so much. I have looked at those. I'm not a drummer. I'm a hack uh, guitar player, piano player. But um, I, some of the stuff that you've created with the Rocket Drum Kits are really, really cool, man. Some of those designs that you've created, those are really. You know, cool. I wish I was still. I wish I was still doing it, man. Uh, I, I unfortunately, the the I'm not uh, building right now. When I went through cancer, I lost the business. Um, because I wasn't there. I mean, I was there pretty much every day. And unfortunately, I, I just, I couldn't be. And, you know, my guys, um, you know, they, they have families. They have, right. they need to make money. So, you know, they had to go other directions and look for work. And unfortunately, I just, uh, to start that whole thing up again would be quite a bit of money. But right. uh, I, I'm never going to say never because um, right. I love the business. I really honestly do. Yeah, you you created some great stuff. I just I just want to commend you on that. And and I was kind of under the impression that maybe you weren't probably doing that anymore. But I really I really encourage people to check out the the stuff that he created, the Rocket Drum Kits and the Rocket Drum Snares, and and they are awesome. And uh, matter of fact, I think you even did some pink sticks for breast cancer and stuff like that at the time. And you were doing some really cool. Yes, we did something for April Samuels. Yeah. Uh, you know, listen, I would love to, you know, I, what, what I'd love to find is somebody that I could sort of partner with uh, a, a, another drum company and sort of come back into the market that way. But uh, right now I just sort of, you know, I had to just sit it aside for a little bit and get better and, you know, get everything back on track. So yeah, listen, we'll drum- see what happens in the future. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen, if a drum company is listening right now or if you're listening to this on a podcast, you just heard Ricky. He's just opening himself up. Why don't you go 
check out his some of his stuff, right? Ricky's willing to get back into the drum kit creation business. If you're a drum company, Tama, whatever, why don't you just give Ricky a call and have him start creating some new drums? You guys could use a little flavor. It's just my suggestion. Okay, Pearl, you could use a little flavor in those drums, right? Why not call Ricky? <laughs> have him come in. Ricky Rocket will be happy to design. Did they do that okay, Ricky? You know, I- I've offered myself a few times to various drum companies and said, look, you know, I could be your custom department because – this is what I do. I, I really like to get in the head, inside the head of drummers' right. minds, essentially, and find out really what makes them tick and, and really come up with stuff that is just – because the, the, a drum kit's the centerpiece right. of, of any stage, really. And, yes. you know, a drummer can't keep changing instruments all night like a guitar player can <laughs> or a bass player. You know, we're stuck with the same thing the whole night and the whole tour. Typically. Right, right. So, yeah. you know, it's really got to be over the top and it's really got to work for the person physically and it's got to look great and it's got to sound great. And I was good at putting all those elements together. Um, that's sort of my magic, really, I feel like. That, that's that's awesome. So, so let me let me I, I got to ask the question, right, because, you know, that's what I do. And 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 so are we looking at another poison tour coming up? Yes, we've been talking about touring next summer, uh, next spring. Um, I, I'm not sure when it would start, but typically it, we start in the spring. It may start earlier than that. We've talked about other music, but I don't. Nothing is on the books right now with either thing. But I think it will be on the books soon, and we'll, I'll be able to. We'll be able to make an announcement. Uh, right now, we haven't, you know, said okay. This is the month we're going to do this, and this is the month we're going to do it. Let's sign it up and get it going we haven't done that part of it yet but i'm confident we will are you doing anything with the devil city angels i am not right now brandon's sort of off doing his own little thing right now with a solo thing that he's doing uh and uh of course tracy guns stepped out a while ago to go back to la guns which i think was a great move for him sure uh as much as i loved having him in the band and we started the devil city angels uh, I love working with that guy. He's a, he's awesome. He's you know legendary. But you know, I mean, so is LA Guns, and to see that band together with him is, you know, that's awesome. That's the way it should be. What is the most difficult thing as you get a little older? Because you look like you're still you know 25. I don't know how you do it. I'm just jealous as heck. Being oh, over. thank you, man. <laughs> uh, but how? What is the difference in touring now? at this point versus when you were in your twenties touring, what's the, what's the biggest difference for you? Um, I think, you know, I actually, it's very demanding right now, uh, oddly enough, but it's demanding in a different way. I think in a healthier way, uh, we do a lot of meet and greets. Now we meet a lot of fans and that, that is, you know, people don't know how tiring that is. You think Mm -hmm. people only think of that, 30 seconds, 90 seconds that you say hi to somebody. Hey, how you doing? You take a picture. They think, how bad can that be? But if you, if you go two or three minutes with 70 people, you know, add up that time and the amount of energy and the smile you're trying to do and the questions you're trying to answer. And, you know, if your if your feet ache that day from something or you have to pee or, I mean, you know, we're human beings, you know what I'm saying? But right. so, but it's fine because we love fans. We love to meet our fans. So we do all that. But, it, you know, sort of at the end of the day, you know, it's like, it's like the first time I ever went snowboarding. Like at the end of the day, I thought I was going to die. I was, I was having so much fun. I didn't realize how tired I was. But right. you go back to, to, to your dressing room, you're like, oh, my God, do I have anything in me for the show? Right. <laughs> well, I just gave them my show, you know. I, I, well, I, 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 you know, I met Zach Brown. Uh, did one of those meet and greet things, and I met Zach Brown and the Zach Brown Band uh, a year ago, and he was out here in Raleigh, um, North Carolina, and I, I felt so bad. The first thing I said to Zach is, "I'm sorry, because I know this is exhausting, right?" And and you know, I apologized to him, and he said, "Oh, it was cool," but I knew it was exhausting. I knew that it was, you know, I knew that it was just, and I and I told my wife, I said, "Look, I said, we're not going to ask him any questions. We're going to thank them for their art." tell them that we're so sorry that we put them through this because I said they're tired and then they got to put on a show. I said they, they, there's well, 75 I mean, here's the thing. You know, you plan for it. You know, right. this is part of 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 what you're doing. So, you know, if you 
if you're a person that wants to party and stay up really super late every night and then go and do a sound check and play the show, you might be able to pull that off. Then you add some other things, radio station visit, meet and greets. All of a sudden, you can't go to bed as late. You got Something's got to go. And if you're not willing to do that, you're going to be tired. You're going to look tired. You're going to start to age fast. You're going to, you know, all those things. You can't do it all, man. You know what I mean? And the thing that's important to me is that when we go on the road, we deliver a great show and we're cordial to our fans. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and so that takes priority over, over anything. So when somebody's like, come on, dude, let's go have a beer. It's like, you know, if I do that, it's going to be three beers or four or on and on and on. And you know what? I ain't going to make meet and greet the next day. I'm not going to make sound check the next day. You know, and, and uh, I mean, this is where bands start to go downhill. When people ask us about our longevity, it's, it's really super simple. Our work ethic hasn't changed. I mean, I do feel like the dynamic has changed. Of course, we're not connected at the hip like we were when we were 27 years old, you know, and everywhere we went, we were with each other. Um, it's not like that. We have families, we've grown up, but you know, uh, you know, our work ethic is the same. We still want to get out there and when we're on the road, you know, we're there to do business, man. We're there to play music and, and have a great time with the fans. That's what we're there to do. Everything else is second. Is it still fun for you? It's a blast for me. I mean, to grab a bus and a trailer and throw my motorcycle in the back and, hmm. you know, ride all over the place, meet people, see people I haven't seen in a year, uh, play for people. Um, you know, I mean, it, it, you know, sample the food from all these different places. It's fucking awesome. I mean, honestly, it is. I, is it tiring? Yeah, of course it is. Um, but, you know, vacations are tiring. How many times do you come back from a vacation and you're like, oh, my God, I'm so exhausted. I need a vacation from my vacation. <laughs> well, I need a vacation yes. from tour only because I'm tired from having a good time. <laughs> I, 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 I totally get it. We're talking with Ricky Rocket, drummer for Poison here on the Jiggy Jaguar Experience. Jiggy's there in the background, occasionally laughing, and uh, my name is Jay Izzo. Otherwise known as the Internet Doctor or Jay to the Izzo or whatever you want to call me. And we're having a great discussion talking yes. not only about Poison and his, and his time as a musician, but also we want to make sure that we bring total awareness uh, to uh, HPV-attributed throat cancer. He's a HPV-attributed throat cancer survivor. And, uh, the, of course, Poison's album, which was called Open Up and Say Ah, is the theme for uh, head, and, head and Neck Cancer Alliance and for 2019. And so we're encouraging you to open up and say, ah, go get yourself checked. Go get your, if you have a child 11, 12 years old, the, 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 you can get, you can get your child uh, uh, an antivirus shot, and um, don't be afraid of it, folks, because the alternative is far worse. So make sure that we do that. Yes. And we're talking music, and we're talking drum kits, and we're talking all sorts of things because we're about to talk motorcycles with Ricky. <laughs> and you can find Ricky at Ricky Rocket uh, at Twitter, just R I K K I R O C K E T T, both on Twitter and Facebook, and he's got the Rocket Vlog. B-L-O-G on YouTube. Make sure you check that out as well. He's got all sorts of social media and all sorts of ways that you can reach out to him, and uh, you, you need to w look at his stuff, folks. And by the way, if you're a drum manufacturer, Ricky um, is willing to partner up with you. Uh, take a look at his stuff, because I think it would be worthwhile for you to do that as well. I want to talk to you about the motorcycle thing, because you have, you don't just like motorcycles. This is a passion for you, motorcycles. I am the motorcycle evangelist. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> you know, I've kind of, I toyed around with that moniker just out of jest and somebody laughed so hard about it. I forget who it was. I think it was one of the guys working on my house. I said, you know what? I just, I have to use that. Like, yeah. like why not? Like it's kind it's so ridiculous. You know, it's like saying like I'm a two wheel pastor, you know what I mean? <laughs> but you know, you know, I looked at it and I went to myself, you know, motorcycle sales are down across the board and it's because a new generation is riding them less. And I want to encourage the new generation to ride because it is such an awesome experience. 
And uh, so I feel like I'm a little bit of the guy that runs to the four corners of the world and preaches the gospel of riding motorcycles. So I am the evangelist. <laughs> I sound like David Lee Roth right now, don't I? I you do. You actually you do kind of sound like David Lee Roth. I was going to say, you're the. Oh, you're, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> he's not. He's not. He's Ricky Rocket. I'm just saying that. Okay. He's not. All right. So, so uh, how many do you have in your stock? I have pot? seven. I have seven motorcycles, not counting mini bikes and stuff. Right. So your favorite right now? The favorite right now? What's the what's in the lead? Which 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 one's your favorite right now? Oh gosh, that is so hard to say because I do different types of riding. You know what I, I mean? Know. Like as far I have to split it up between two different okay. things. Uh, on street, uh, I sort of fell in love with the Indian Scout Bobber, and then I started riding the Roadmaster uh, because it's a bigger bike and I can take uh, TC on it, my fiance. And so I fell in love with that for the street. And for the dirt, I've been having such a blast on my uh, Ducati uh, Scrambler Desert Sled. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a blast. And uh, that thing, you know, I mean, I, I had no idea how much fun that bike would be. Ducati. Okay. By the way, Jiggy, I don't know how familiar you are, but Ducati's made in Italy, and uh, if it, it, sa me, it sounded like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, to me, if there is a bike that just goes okay, that you go Italy motorcycles, dirt, you get you get if you can get a Ducati that that desert cycle. Oh my gosh, that thing that. Yeah, it handles like a dream. It's it's like butter in your hands. It's every motorcyclist who's an enthusiast, right? I mean, right? When you're out there with that, that thing it just handles so well. It, it it does, and you know, I mean, gosh, there's it's for dirt these days. I mean, Honda's back in the game with some great stuff, and you know, with the adventure riding stuff with the Africa Twin, and then you know, uh, Triumph is killing it. I mean, I, and I love Triumphs. You know, I love the British invasion. I mean, their, their bikes are great. I have one. Of course I, you would. Why would you? You know, I've got some old stuff. What's that? I'm sorry. Why wouldn't you love the British Invasion? You got you named two kids after two Beatles songs. What do you? Why, why would you not? Why would <laughs> you not? not absolutely. <laughs> why would you not? And I name a third one something else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, if you call her Madonna, I was waiting to name my one of the other kids. You know, JoJo or something. You know. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> You, you, you maybe can't do Madonna, right? Because we could steal Lady Madonna from the Beatles, but maybe you could do Jimmy. Oh, we could name one Rigby. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, no, we could name one Rigby. Yeah, right, we could name one, right? Yeah, we could. Yeah, Rigby's good. And here I am trying to help you come up with baby names. That's awesome. Uh, I, so I, I don't need baby names. I don't plan on having any more. So. <laughs> but I will have dogs and cats, so. Okay, good. We'll, we'll, just, we'll start there. Song. Yeah, we'll start yeah. there. We'll start there. So <laughs> when you tour. And I, I want to you... hold your paw. Yeah. <laughs> hold your paw. That's brilliant. Well played. Well played. That's brilliant. That's you, corny, and I love it. But I love it. I like corny. And by the way, it's, this is the Jiggy Jaguar show. Corny works. Yes. On this show. Oh you, my you God. Have, I'm yeah. in the right place. Then. <laughs> you're in the, you're, you, trust me. You, 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 you've hit a home run with. Yes. You know. Can, you know. I want to hold your paw. It, you know what? Yeah. Right. <laughs> We're right right now right now there's seven dogs howling to that song right now. Put that together. Meanwhile, there's there's some there's some certain millennials who are under the age of thirty going, I don't get it. What's yeah, hold my paw? They don't have a clue what's going on. <laughs> yeah, of course. Right. So when, when you uh, so do you so when you travel, do you take the Indian bike when you're on the road with the band? Is that what you take? I took the bobber last year, yeah. Okay. That's what I had in the road with me last year. Yeah. Yeah, it's we'll great. See. I'm trying to give them, I'm trying to get them to give me one an FTR 1200 to take out for this summer uh -huh. and do a million vlogs with. So we'll see what they do. Oh, so what is Indian way? Indian, Indian motorcycles. Listen to me. If you're if you're waiting for another invitation from Ricky, there's no reason to wait any longer, right? I mean, Ricky's saying right now, hey, listen, I'll take the bike out every day. You know, while I'm on tour. I'm, I'm right here. I'm sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> he's sitting right here. He's saying, listen, I'll take it on tour. I'll show off the bike to everybody when, when we're on tour. So he's happy to do it. So Indian Indian motorcycles, why don't you just you find Ricky? You know, it's easy. You can they find him on Twitter. do meet and greets. You might as well take it to the meet and greet. Yeah, yeah, you might as well. Take him wherever Ricky's at. Ricky will be riding that bike all over the United States. It's like your human billboard. You can't ask for a better person. 
Oh, and, and I'm telling I'm telling you in advance that thing is a beast. It is cool. It's cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. So, you know, we talked about this. There, there's another part of this, and it's your love of cameras. And I know you love your drones, but you love the camera. What? What? I do. Going? I've spent stupid money on cameras. I'm like an idiot with cameras. <laughs> what created that fascination? Do you think for you? You know, I think my uncle, my uncle Jack, uh, was in the Army Air Corps uh, back in the '40s, and he was a reconnaissance photographer. He did 147 missions over enemy territory. They sent him to Culver City to learn how to do filmography so that he could uh, do these shorts for the war uh, that would go between, you know, when people would go to the movies and see what was currently happening because we didn't have the news the way we do now, uh, that instant upload. And, you know, so I always messed around with his cameras. I always asked a million questions. He always had a million photography magazines and Shutterbug and all that stuff on his desk and on his kitchen table and I would, you know, so I was just always fascinated with it. And then when he got out of the service, he uh, would go and and refurbish theaters, him and his partner, and they would get these broken down theaters and get them up and running. And he'd show me the projectors and all that kind of stuff. And at a point in time, I really thought I was going to go that way in life. You know what I mean? Uh, But I didn't, I stuck to the drums and, uh, but I've always been fascinated with cameras. So it, it didn't end and it's still going strong. So cameras, I'm assuming, I'm assuming this, and I know the danger of doing that, Ricky, but cameras have got to be like motorcycles, right? I mean, it's hard to, like, depending on what you want to do, it, it depends on your favorite. Is that right? Oh, my God. Yeah, it's terrible. I have for, for digital stuff, you know, for cinema-type cameras, I'm a red guy. For still, right. I love Leica. And for vlogging, oh my God, that is a can of worms. That is where I try everything under the sun and never stop trying it. Right. <laughs> because right. you always want to stay small, but you want to stay big enough that it's like look cinematic, but you want good sound. And you want, I mean, there's a, the demands of a vlogger are ridiculous. And I wish there was just one company that would listen to us and create right. the ultimate vlogging machine, you know? Right. Well, the, the, the thing that I think we miss is somebody who does video and, you know, audio and, and, you know, podcasts on my own and everything. And Jiggy started me on this whole journey. I want to thank him very much for allowing me to spend a whole bunch of money, uh, <laughs> forcing me to spend well, a whole bunch good. of money now on a hobby that's turning into more than a hobby that I, is a job <laughs> that I just don't get paid for. So anyway, uh, so I appreciate you doing that on my podcasting and, and videoing. So Jiggy, thanks for sure. that. But because uh, I get it, you know, I know where you're going. But, you know, the thing is with the vlogs and you've experienced this, it's the sound. A lot of people underestimate the sound quality. You've got to have really good sound to make the video work. If you don't have crisp audio, that's terrible. I mean, I, I think I've finally nailed it on this last one. And I've been using my Osmo Pocket. And today I just received that little mic input. So I can't wait to try it. Like I'm going to try it like today. <laughs> I'm very uh, excited about that little gadget. It's this tiny little thing. And I'm like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true. Okay. By the way, yes, we just got geeky there. Okay. We got camera geeky and sound geeky. Okay. We just did everybody. If you're listening on the Jiggy Jaguar experience, we did. But I got to tell you, I'm an early adapter of technology like Ricky evidently is. And I get a little excited about little things that may make my life easier from a technology standpoint, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That yeah, means, because at the, at the end of the day, look, you just want it, you know, sometimes, you know, if you miss the sh- you, you, it's so easy to miss shots, you know what I mean, because of setup. And, you know, it can get really super frustrating, you know what I mean? And, and I compound the problem by being somebody that vlogs off the motorcycle. I mean, it's like, what can I take on the motorcycle? And I've been taking the big bike, and I'm going to get into a few things here in the near future. I can't take a big bike where I'm going. Right. i got to take a smaller bike because I'm going on trails. <laughs> right, right. So basically what you're saying, Ricky, is you're going to take both of your passions. You're going to take your passion for motorcycles and your passion for cameras, and you're going to try to combine this so that you can blow your emotional mind. That's what you're saying. That's what I'm trying to do. And, you know, I've always been interested in, like, I've always loved horror films and all that kind of stuff. There's never been any room in Poison for anybody to see that side of me because we're just not like this bandit, you know, 
celebrates the dark side or anything like that. And uh, but, you know, I've always uh, gone to horror conventions. And I mean, I remember going to the early Fango conventions and all that kind of stuff. And I just have myriads of books and things like that. So and I've always been fascinated about local legend and lore. And, you know, so now that I'm sort of people have sort of responded and went, yeah, this is pretty fun. It's like, oh, you just swung the door wide open because I've got a million of them. Like I could do this for years. <laughs> right, 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 right. So every, every, every person that I have ever, every camera enthusiast or when you're right now, you're really more of a professional than just enthusiast. Let's be honest with you. So every, everybody I know has a particular shot a picture of something that they have on their wall that they go, I really caught this one that day. It, you know, and it's usually one of those things that didn't, you didn't plan on. It just happened and you caught it. What's that picture on your wall? Well, it's one that I shot with my, I, I can't remember what state I was in. Um, I want to say I was in Iowa, but I was getting off an exit and there was a homeless guy standing and I normally don't shoot homeless people because I think it's a cheap right. street photography trick, and I I don't like to do it. But this guy had a thing that said, "Try to hit me with a dollar," <laughs> at sign, and I just thought it was brilliant. And right. I said, "I will. In fact, I'll give you five dollars if you let me take a picture of you." So you're employed right now by me, just for a minute. I'm going to pay you for being a model. So you're not just a homeless guy with a handout right now. Right. And so there was a moment between him and I, you know what I mean? Right. And right. so that, that's, that, I thought that was kind of cool. See, it, it's Jiggy, this is the thing. Every photographer that I've ever known, there's that one picture that they go back to. Yep. They may not, that they all, the, every one of them that I've ever known has that one picture where they go, this was the moment. And they could tell you, they may not remember exactly where they are, but they could describe exactly to the detail those oh, things yeah. like, he, the, you know, the dollar, him, try to hit me with the dollar. No, I'm going to give you five. You're employed by me. It's, it's, it's that type of thing. It's very cool. It's amazing. Uh, that when you hear somebody's photography. And by the way, we're talking with Ricky Rocket here on the Jiggy Jaguar Experience, KJAG Radio. And uh, by the way, Ricky can be found at R-I-K-K-I, Rocket, R-O-C-K-E-T-T, -T, on Twitter, Facebook, Oh, all over the place. Check out the Rocket vlog. You can even go to rickyrocket.com and check out some of the things that he's doing there as well. And the Jiggy Jaguar show, by the way, you can find that everywhere. You just need to type in Jiggy Jaguar because he's in 50, 50 radio stations across this country and he's syndicated and he's podcasting. He's doing all sorts of things. It's just crazy. He's that big. If 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 he's if if it's anybody, it's Jiggy Jaguar. You can download the Jig, Jiggy Jaguar app by going to the Jagshow. dot com, or just go to your iPod or your i iPhone. Sorry, iPod. Did I just say iPod? Oh my gosh! Your go to your <laughs> iPod. Hey, hey iPod. I love iPods, baby. <laughs> I love it. That's because that's where all my poison songs were. We're on my iPod. Um, I had all my poison songs. You were on my cassette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I put them all there on my little iPod mini. Um, no, you can you know, just go just go take your Android app or your iPhone app, and you can download the Jag Show and uh, just look for a Jiggy Jaguar. Dude, I just have to tell you something in a second. I, sure. I was looking at surround sound stuff, right? and because I'm finally going to make that move, and I was talking to the salesman who's quite a bit younger than me. Right. And he said, well, you'll need an amplifier. And I said, well, I got this Pioneer that's pretty cool. <laughs> he was like, what? <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> I'm, laugh I'm laughing. I'm laughing because you just said the word Pioneer. <laughs> and you know what? They're actually a viable company still. <laughs> But they the all... one I have, I don't think they'd even acknowledge that they made. <laughs> okay? I think they would just go, look, we never made that. Somebody put our name on that one, okay? <laughs> uh, that's awesome. It, it, that's, that's, that's fabulous. Yeah, it, I've got a pioneer. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, uh, I, could just see, I could see the kid's mouth just, like, stop. His eyes look like they're deer in the headlight eyes looking at you going, I'm not even sure how to respond to that question, Ricky. I'm, I'm, I'm really. I'm... He, he was trying to maintain his level of professionalism, and I saw his struggle. <laughs> <laughs> I was absolutely understanding his struggle. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. R Ricky, when, you know, I know that you've got your hands into so many things. Right. I mean, and I think it's just because that's 
you know, as a musician and as a hack, even as a hack musician like myself, you know, I think that our right, we're so right brained and we're so creative. It's hard for us to sit still and just do one thing. We want to be in so many things because it actually kind of gives us a sense of comfort. I believe that we are contributing in a variety of different ways and we're using so many of the talents that we've been blessed with. And so where, where do you, where do you want to go with all this? What, what is it that you see yourself? I mean, if you could place a vision for yourself, where do you see yourself, you know, with all the things you got your hands in? You know what? Honestly, I love doing this vlog on my YouTube channel because I get to uh, ride motorcycles. I get to create a story, populate that story, mm-hmm. do a soundtrack to it in many cases. Sometimes I use other people's music. But I get to select that music. I have control over that. And I don't mean to sound like a control freak, but it is a little bit of a control freak. Sure is. But I get to control this sort of, I get to like create this world sort of. And I love documentary and I'd love to do more documentary and one day do a live action film of some kind, preferably horror because I love that genre and I'm good at it, uh, I think. And, uh, you know, and I just think that, uh, you know, I, I, I love the, the, just the creative arts. You know, I've always believed that if you're a creative person and you're not creating, you're just taking up space yeah, man. because yeah. that's what you should be doing. You know? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I listen, I agree. I agree with that. I believe that some of us are more, have that creative side, you know, and, and by the way, if you're a person who's on more on that logical left brain side and, and you're not using that, I think you're in the same space, man. You're, you're just taking up space because you're not using what you've been given. And so you need to do that just like the creative side of folks like us do. And cause I, I, I understand how that is where you want to, you, there's something more that you want to be a part of. There's, I always say what's next, right? Cause I don't know what's next because people will say, Oh, you should have, when I would graduate college, right? People would say, follow your passions. Heck, I didn't even know podcasting didn't exist when I graduated college, right? I had no idea I had a passion for it. And I, so I tell people, don't, don't worry about the flying. The passions will show up later, right? Because I don't think that this was on your radar, was it, that you were wanting to do film? Was that always on your radar? No. I mean, you know, I've always liked the idea. I've had friends that have been in the business and stuff. And usually they're the more sort of, you know, uh, hands-on people, really, uh, oddly enough. Uh, but – you know, so yeah, I've always loved that uh, stuff. I made a short film God, almost 15 years ago now, and uh, I've done three of them. And you know, they're not out there; they're not out for distribution sure. or any of that kind of stuff. But I learned a lot from it. And the reason I think I learned a lot is because, um, you know, when we started first making music videos, Poison, that is, right. um, you know, right. it was treated like a film. They actually used film on these videos. Yeah. You know, at first, like Marty Colner, I mean, he treated yeah. it like a movie. And a lot of those people were people that worked on films. And the yeah. whole process was like making a movie. So I learned from, from Marty Colner and from watching those things and being involved. And I think we're all, all four of us did, you know. Uh, but I, I really soaked it up. I'd hang out. I'd watch how all this stuff was done. And, um, you know, a lot of it started then. I realized just how powerful um the visual is. And, and then, and then of course, without the sound, you got to have the sound. I love populating my tracks. I would love to just spend a, a couple of days working on music, a couple of days working on the visual, you know, and to do all that and just spend my life, the rest of my life doing that stuff is just awesome. And I, but I love to perform live. So I got to go out and do that once in a while too. <laughs> That's what I'm, I, I, I get it because I understand because you're saying, you're saying exactly what I said. And that is when you're that creative, you just can't sit still and just do focus on the one thing. There's actually a joy in doing a little bit of it all. Right? Absolutely. There is. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And it's just like any craftsman, you know what I mean? I mean, right. if somebody even, you know, uh, if somebody is a cabinet maker, for example, and they're very creative with it, uh, you know, maybe their dream is to create those cabinets and then also do the installs because they miss doing the install. You know, I mean, it's no different. It, it's the same concept. It's like you fill in your time with something you love and, you know, all the mechanics and aspects of it. And uh, that's what makes it all interesting to me. Yeah, and, and by the way, we're talking with Ricky Rocket here on the Jiggy Jaguar Experience, uh, drummer for Poison. 
So do you have a screenplay already written? Have you been writing one? Like, cause I, I mean, cause you know, you've said, I wrote right. something a long time ago, actually a series uh, called tales from the talking board. A talking board is a Ouija board basically. Right, right, right. And, and the whole thing is just based on all these stories where uh, people sort of, they sort of uh, project their ideas onto this board. Really, the board isn't really doing anything, but they're projecting their whole life, and it causes all these rifts and all these things that they unearth emotionally out of themselves, and, and it creates this whole storyline, and then they throw it away, and somebody finds it, and then the next story continues. So that's something that I've uh, done. And I also wrote one with my little boy called Time Out. And it's about it's a it's a it's a kid that's a uh, it's a horror movie. <laughs> it's a, horror is elementary. <laughs> so no one's gone there yet. I did. <laughs> <laughs> what is what 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 is the fascination for you in horror? Just just out of curiosity, I'm just I'm asking that just simply because. <sighs> I want to know what that fascination is. If, if you can even explain it, you know, I don't even know if you can. I always thought monsters were misunderstood and I consider myself a little monster and I feel very misunderstood quite honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming out of the closet with it. <laughs> uh, that's well, I, I've noticed the makeup stuff and some of the, some of the stuff that you've done, right. You've done this, these monster thing, right. You, there, matter of fact, there is one called Mon Mon monsters, Oh my gosh! What was it called? It was um, Monster Palooza. Oh, one vlog, Monster Palooza. Yeah, yeah. I was just there Fifty Six. Monster Palooza. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. did, that's did, it. Yeah. So when you were a kid, because you you would you and I are pretty close, the same age. So when you were a kid, did you did you watch Creature Feature on Saturday nights? Absolutely, Doctor Shock and all that stuff. Yeah, we, we, we Doctor Sanguinary. Yeah. Is who we have. I built a little coffin and I uh, um, <laughs> did a Dracula outfit and got my dad's eight millimeter, uh, you know, uh, camera and shot a little video. And I used my hamster. That was my rat. So I did the hairspray, you know, that you could spray and change yeah. the color for Halloween yeah. on yeah. my poor hamster. I, I please, I <laughs> don't recommend anybody do that. Okay, that's a cruel and mean thing. And I didn't know any better, honestly. <laughs> Uh, the poor thing freaked out, and uh, I'll do that again. But, uh, but as far um, as we know, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, I don't like the color of him. He can't be brown and white. He's got to be black. He's a rat, you know. And uh, but he didn't have the right tail, you know. And I was like, ah, well, it got bit off, you know. <laughs> um, and, uh, so I'm Dracula, and I video, I filmed this, and I, I do have it in my archive somewhere. One day I'm going to release this goofy thing. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I, you know, I, I think when I was a kid as well that I had the same fascination with monster movies, right? And they scared the crud out of me. Now, now I look back at the movies that we were watching back when we were kids. They aren't all that scary, by the way. But I did have a fascination with them. And, and as well, and I think. Oh man, totally! I mean, most kids had Wilt Chamberlain on their wall. I had Bela Lugosi. Right. And, you know, I mean, <laughs> yes, I had all those posters out of Mon famous Monsters of Filmland magazine. I'd buy those posters and put them on my door. But you know, I, you know, years later after I saw The Exorcist, I became friends with Linda Blair, and I absolutely love Linda and everything she stands for because she's so there for the animals. It's amazing. But there are sometimes I will sit there and I'll look at her a little bit sideways. And I go, that expression you just gave freaked me out. Right. To be honest with you, Linda. <laughs> right, 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 right. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I'm about to get a priest. I'm about to get a priest over. Hello, Linda. Stop that. Don't do that. No, I, I think there is a, I think there was a fascination for us as, as little boys. I, I mean, listen, I had the Boris Karloff, uh, right, Frankenstein. Um, monster. I had, I, I, some, I, somewhere I got that. It was in one of the magazines. I remember putting it up on my wall too. It was that Boris Karloff? I think it was like three feet by two feet or something like that, or something that unfolded. You know, the Karloff family was at Monster Palooza, and I, I, I met the grandson. He was a very nice guy, uh, and uh, yeah, they've continued that estate. So you know, the Karloffs are alive and well in Hollywood. Well, I, I think people ought to give them a job. 
I think I think they should too. Just like I think they should. I think that Pearl or Tam or somebody should be calling you on the phone right now, interrupting this interview, going, "We'd like you to design some drum kits." That's, That's awesome. what I think. Okay, and <laughs> yeah. I th- I think Indian motorcycles should be calling you right now while we're doing this interview and going, "Yes, we would love to have you ride our motorcycle." Thank you. I drum. appreciate that. <laughs> That's what they should be doing. I don't I, know. I do they're... know some of those folks over in India, uh, and and they they're they're very cool people. By the way, yeah, that's cool. We're, we're we're talking with Ricky Rocket here on the Jiggy Jaguar program, and uh, Ricky has been so kind to spend some time and indulge me in my craziness here uh, on the Jiggy Jaguar. But so is Jiggy. Jiggy's been kind enough to allow me to indulge, indulge me too. And l- listen, I don't want us to forget why he came on the show. And the real reason that Ricky came on the show was that uh, he is a spokesman for the Head and Neck Cancer Alliance. And they just had their 21st annual um, Oral Head and Neck Cancer Awareness Week and in Charleston, I think it was, South Carolina. Is that right? Was it Charleston? Is that correct? I, I believe so. I think, it was, I think it was. I haven't been to their headquarters. Yeah, I think They that's... actually came to me. Okay. So anyway, and, and Ricky is a survivor and uh, in, in remission. Is say, can we say that? Is that how we best phrase yeah. that, Ricky, in remission right now? And, uh, you know, he, he's encouraging all of us, uh, not just all of you, but all of us. That includes Jiggy and myself and any one of you who are listening to Open Up and Say Ah, which conveniently is the name of the second album that Poison put out. And Ricky, of course, is a drummer for Poison. And he's encouraging all of us to uh, go and get screened. Uh, in our local yep. communities and and get ex- get an examination and check out to make sure that you're okay. And also, he's encouraging us to also take a look at your kids and go ahead and get them vaccinated. I know that that's not a popular term right now, but considering the alternative, folks, these vaccines don't don't. There's not a conspiracy that these vaccines contain something else that's going to make your kids do something else, or they're going to become something, or they're going to grow hair on their toes. That's just not what's going to happen here, folks. These vaccines are to keep us from getting cancer. And they're, you know, let's be honest here. Um, head and neck cancer is is a horrible disease. And if you've known anybody that's ever had it, like my wife has had it on her face um, and has had squeamish cell removed. It scared her to death and um, and still concerns her a great deal. And, and I know it bothers Ricky too as well. But don't wait. Get yourself screened. Did I do okay on that, Ricky? How did I do there? Yeah, no, you did fantastic. Where was hers, by the way, if you don't mind me asking? It was on her. It was on her left cheek. Um, okay. And, and uh, she, she was so scared because you know she her she, her face is uh, part of her brand because she owns her own real estate company here, and she's I I can say this, Jiggy, right? Safely, oh, she's yeah. she's beautiful, right, Jiggy? She's a big time perv magnet. <laughs> she, she, she's beautiful and she was really worried and uh but you know what the doctors and surgeons did such a great job of you know i mean we, we you know had people come in and we were fortunate enough that we could have somebody come in and work with it and be able to make it look like it doesn't exist so um yeah you'd never yeah. you'd never know that that she had anything going on there yeah. Yeah, she had, so it was right on her cheeks. So well, was... the people that do well are the people that are on top of it. You don't just not care and do well. I mean, that's you know that's typically not how that works. Um, right. Yeah. So you know, uh, you know, I do encourage people to just kind of stay on top of it. You know, that's anything health wise. You know, you don't have to become a paranoid like me, but uh, you know, <laughs> but you know, definitely, definitely stay on top of those things and just keep an eye out for it. I don't want people freaking out every time they get a sore throat that they, you know, that that's that's just not true. But uh, but you know there there are um, you know times where it goes a little bit too long or it it's a little more it's different it, it it's a different sore. I mean I was thinking what the hell like this is this is really bad. I've never had this strain before. You know what I mean? Like it just didn't it it was a little different and. Uh, but, you know, the only way to realize, some people don't have symptoms. They just get a lymph node popping up. They don't even notice a change in their swallow, you know. Uh, that happens sometimes, too. So, uh, but, uh, and by the time there's a lymph node involved, there's definitely a primary somewhere else. So, right. you know, that's the bad part about all that. 
That's that's cool. And, and Ricky, thank you so much for supporting this uh, great organization. By the way, uh, the organization is easy to get a hold of. If you want to learn more information, you can go to headandneck.org. It's headandneck.org. And uh, Ricky, I appreciate you. Um, man, you've given us over an hour. Um, yeah. I don't know if you know that. And and I, I can't be thank you enough. And folks, please check out Ricky's vlog. Please go to YouTube. I'm telling you, the vlog is really, really good. And it thank just you gets, so much. I appreciate you no, know, it really is. And it gets better and better and better. I, I've watched several shows and listened to several shows. And it, I could just see that you're tweaking and tweaking and tweaking, and I love that because you're just making it better and better and better, and it's really cool, and I love the direction that you're heading, and I really hope that you write a horror flick that uh, we're going to go watch in the movie really, really soon someday. And by the way, you can... You I can... have it, love it. <laughs> I, I think you would love it. I got a feeling you would. I don't know that you're going to give up poison for it, but maybe you <laughs> fit poison into the horror film. I'm just saying... I'm just saying. Hey, Rob Zombie didn't have to give up Rob Zombie's career. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, I'm saying. So, yeah. hey, he's not the only game in town, right? Yeah, no. There's, <laughs> he's there's very good, of, by the way. Yeah, very good, right? He's very good. And you can find Ricky at uh, on Twitter at Ricky Rocket. And by the way, you spell Ricky R I K K I, and you spell Rocket with two T's. Okay, so if you find Ricky Rocket. You can find him on Twitter that way. You can find him on Facebook that way. You can find him on all sorts of social media. Just look him up. He is available. His stuff is really fun, and it's good. And he could not be more fun and more genuine. And we have been privileged to have him on the Jiggy Jaguar experience. You've been a fabulous guest. Thank you for indulging me, Ricky. I really yes. appreciate it. Yes. Thank, thank you very much. And just I just want to just a, a couple shout-outs really quick. And sure. that, that is to my cancer doctor, Dr. Ezra Cohen, down there in San Diego, who essentially saved my life, and Dr. Jameis and my hematologist. And then my local doctor here, Dr. Heizenga, just put out a book called Sex, Lies, and STDs. And I suggest you pick it up because there's a wealth of information, stuff that you never thought possible, and a lot of things that are safer than you thought, too. So it's not all bad news when you read that book. Uh, yes, see, see, now, see, when you start throwing out sex, you know, right, which is like pizza, right? We've already discussed that. <laughs> sex is like pizza. Yeah, we have. <laughs> right, right. Even when done poorly, it's still pretty good. So sex, sex lies and that's STDs. Is that what it is? Yeah. By, yep. by it's a great book. Really okay. good stuff. So folks, you know what? We don't generally do that without a publicist, but you know what? What the heck? Let's give him a. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> no, 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 I think okay. that's it's fantastic. A, it's a, no, I would can, I would love to interview him on the show if you yeah, could somehow put us in touch. Was going, I was going with Jiggy. I think we you need to get him on the show. We need to interview him. So we need to find out who Dr. You know Huzan what? He's really great. He's such a hip doctor. He's the doctor that on uh, The Biggest Loser. He's uh, uh, Charlie Sheen's doctor. He was O.J. Simpson. He was the doctor for the uh, for the Oakland Raiders. I mean, yeah, he's got history. He's, he's a really interesting guy to talk to. Oh, Jiggs. Jigs, we oh, gotta yeah. get this guy. I, 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 I'm, I'm looking him up right now. <laughs> I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go, Google search the crap out of this guy to see if yeah, we can get him on. The, <laughs> find the publisher, we'll find the publicist, and we'll get him on. Ricky just gave us a lead. I love it when Ricky gives us a lead. That's How awesome. Can you not like right it? on. There I mean, you go. Ricky, Ricky gave us a lead, and I listen. Drum places. Would you drum manufacturers? Would you hire him? Look at his stuff. It's really good. And an Indian, will you please, for crying out, give him the motorcycle on tour. It just would be, he's a human. He's a human billboard. Just give him the motorcycle. Darn it. Okay. And thank you so much. No, thank you, man. You were you were cool, and, and, and it was so much fun, and I really appreciate it. And so uh, I've already liked your page, and so look out for me because you'll see a six foot five guy in a cowboy hat. And if you do, it's because it's me. So look out for me. Awesome, <laughs> beautiful. Well, All thank right, you, brother. Ricky. We really appreciate it. Thanks for taking as much time as you have, my friend. All right, you guys have a great time uh, the rest of the weekend. We will talk again someday. I hope. Definitely, I hope you will too. definitely. Thank you, Ricky. Have yourself a wonderful day. Thanks, man. All right, you, bye now. Bye. And uh, and Jay, uh, before we wrap up here with you, uh, yeah. get your plugs in there, my friend. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, brand new book out on the market. It's called Lessons from the Farm, Essential Rules for Success. And you can find that on 